I'm, I'm a co-founder of, uh, of the law firm uh, where we help sellers with uh, intellectual property issues, but also with any e-commerce issue. If it's uh, suspension, uh, contracts related to e-commerce, contracts relating to selling the business, anything around e-commerce and IP, we don't do any uh, other uh, legal things that are not related to IP and, and e-commerce don't come to us for uh, real estate or family law or things like that. Um, so um, in addition to Fortunate, I'm uh, to, uh, to the law firm, I'm also co-founder of Fortunate, which is uh, an investment banking firm uh, that helps sellers uh, selling the business. So uh, very busy on the exit part as well. Um, when I think of, uh, of European marketplaces, um, I, you know, I always at the firm, we talk about the complications of, uh, of Europe. Uh, and, and if you look at, you know, the, the different stages of, uh, of selling on Amazon and you compare the U S, uh, to, to Europe. So there are some things that are easier, but the great majority is a little bit more complex in Europe. So on the one hand, as I said earlier, that's uh, that's a headache, right? I mean, we, we don't want complications in our life. And as an Amazon seller, we have enough complications anyway. But on the other hand, once you, uh, you know, you, you're overcoming this obstacle, then you're in and they're out. So any obstacle, remember, it means less sellers and less sellers, less competition, uh, more for you. Um, so, you know, and, and I saw the, the, the first question on the chat now. Uh, I think it was Jesse who asked, uh, I'm, I'm in the toys department, uh, I'm selling in the US, do, do, do you think I'll succeed? And toys is the very good example that um, should succeed in, in, um, in Europe. Uh, you know, Germany, um, Spain, France, I mean, these are, in the UK, of course, these are markets where uh, these toys are, are sold very fast. And sometimes, you know, toys can, can, can go beyond the, the sales in the Euro, in Europe can go beyond the sales in, in the U S. So, um, so the answer to Jesse is absolutely yes, hundred percent go for, uh, for Europe. Now, what are those complications? Um, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll try to go quickly because we don't have much time, but, uh, the, the complications as we see them, um, to one of them is suspensions. When you're suspended in the US um, and you're suspended in Europe, it's just more difficult to get back on track in Europe. So, uh, for example, somebody is suspended for uh, inauthentic product. Um, it usually takes more time and more rounds to get back on track uh, for that. Um, another complication is just opening a new account. Um, you know, I don't know how many of you went through uh, through the process in Europe already, but they ask for a lot of things. They ask for, you know, utility bill, business license, uh, bank statement, passport. These are things that are sometimes asked in the US as well, but in Europe it happens all the time. When you're, um, we have a lot of clients with, uh, for example, an Israeli company, and then uh, Amazon asks for a memorandum of association for their company. That doesn't even exist in Israel. And they're, you know, and you explain to them, but that doesn't exist. And they're, you know, they ask for it again and again and again. So people opening an account, sometimes it can take three months. But remember, once you're in, you're in, they're out. So, you know, you went through that and it's worth it in most cases. Um, I always think, you know, w when you're when you're asking yourself when to start a new market, I think you should ask yourself, uh, where are you right now in your business and, and, and can you deal with it? Uh, because if you're overwhelmed with the US and you just started and you have a lot of excuse to, to launch and you're busy with tons of things at the same time, um, adding five new marketplaces and really going into it uh, may be difficult for you, but if you're into it for a year or two and you're th and things are stable, it's a good time to to expand it. The good thing about it is, you know, as Anna said and Yana as well, is the reviews. I mean, you start, you have your listing in the U.S. It already has a thousand reviews. You just start it in in Europe and you get those reviews and those sales. So, um, so it absolutely makes sense if you have the bandwidth, if you can handle it. 
go for it um, and, and fight it. Um, so there's, you know, so, so there's opening a new account that's a bit more complicated than, than the US. Um, and then there's the yearly verification, like every once in a while, I don't remember if it's a year or two, but every once in a while they go back and they ask again for the document again and again. So every year uh, they're making sure you're still there, you still have your, uh, your documents and everything's okay. Um, another thing that's different in Europe, um, and that's maybe more on the exit side, when you change, when you transfer ownership in an account, while in the US it's super easy, you know, it takes up to a week to change all the details. In Europe, it's hell. Um, so, uh, so it's not in the in Europe. We just we don't transfer uh, the ownership in the account. We just transfer the listings from the from the seller uh, to the buyer. We don't change ownership in the account. It's just practically impossible. It takes months, and sometimes it gets them suspended. So um, don't don't touch anything in your European account once it's uh, it's up. Um, so that these these are the complication, and then there's the VAT. Um, I think that, you know, many people are afraid of, of, of the VAT issue. Should I pay? Where should I pay? When do I pay? Does it matter where my inventory is? And it does. And so there are people who are specializing in that. So you just need a professional telling you exactly what to do, where to pay, um, based on where you sell and, you know, and where you are right now. Um, I wouldn't take any decisions before I speak with one of those uh, professionals. There is, uh, for example, Avask that's doing that, a lot of people working with them. Um, and I'm sure that uh, Jana and Anna can, can recommend others. Um, basically, I mean, what you have to remember is that if you have to pay tax and you didn't, uh, if you have to pay VAT and you didn't, um, you didn't collect it, what happened is that you will have to pay the tax that you should have collected from uh, from you know from the the customers so um if you did collect tax you know you would just add it when they pay it would just add let's say five or ten percent or fifteen percent uh taxes to the product and usually they just proceed so it's on top of the price of your product if you didn't pay they'll go back to you and you will have to pay those five to fifteen percent from you um, and I've had clients with debt of you know 20k 50k and even more than that um, so make sure you know what you're doing and don't don't forget about that um, there can be a penalty usually it's a financial penalty so um, you know I also ranges between five and fifteen percent depending on the you know on, on the country uh, depending on the time you haven't paid so uh, but 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 remember it's it's just not worth it um, the the worst part if you don't pay it is is a suspension so you know so for some for some of the marketplaces we've seen suspensions of accounts that were you know already selling well um, so don't you know don't don't forget this part and make sure you're in touch with a professional um, so that was about the kind of complications, which can deter some of the people. But remember, if it deters you, it deters others, and uh, and so it's an advantage. Um, let's talk about trademark for a while. So trademark, you know, most of you know, uh, trademark protects a brand, right? You have your private label on on Amazon. Um, you want to protect it so that your your listing will be uh, protected. If I'm a hijacker, I can just jump on your listing if you don't have a trademark. Um, so in Europe, until recently, we'd file one trademark and it would cover the entire Europe. Anybody who's done that in the past, if you had one European trademark, it covered the UK as well. And what's going to happen is that, uh, you know, due to Brexit, uh, the UK is just going to be, you're going to get an automatic registration in the UK. So you'll have a European registration and a UK registration. And you don't have to do anything on your brand registry. If you're already in the brand registry, your European registration will become Europe and UK. You're going to have both on your uh, brand registry. If you don't want to have both, for some reason I ignore, uh, then go ahead to your brand registry and inform Amazon you don't want this UK uh, trademark, but otherwise you don't have to do anything. If you're filing now a trademark, so you need one for the UK, uh, for for the UK, and one for the rest of Europe. Um, again, there's one registration covering all the members of the Euro European Community, so it makes sense to file it together. It's uh, it's not very expensive. 
Um, a few things we, you have to remember uh, when dealing with trademarks, very important, I always try to say it, whether it's in Europe or the, or the US. Um, so first of all, trademark, rise, trademark rights uh, arise when you, know, when you start selling, when you start using your trademark. So if I, um, you know, if I started, I invented the, the, the mark Philips um, and I started using it for a while, but I didn't register and then someone else comes in and goes ahead and registers the trademark Philips, I can file a cancellation because I was there first. I can cancel their trademark. Um, so when, when you're choosing a name, two things to remember. One, do a Google search. Make sure that there's nobody already using this trademark uh, in the UK or in Europe. Um, and second, uh, make sure that it's not registered. There's nobody else with that name. If it's taken, it means you won't have a trademark. If you don't have a trademark, you don't have the brand registry. Anybody can jump on your listing. Nobody will buy your account in the future if you want to sell the business. Um, so you'll be in a very bad position and you cannot change your listing um, to, to, you cannot change the brand on your listing later. So it's not like you can try oh, I didn't get the trademark, let's move to something else completely. It's extremely difficult to get Amazon to change your brand. And even if you manage to do that, since it's against the terms of service, Amazon can suspend or, um, you know, close this listing in the future. We've had, we've actually had a case where, uh, you know, we, we were in the middle of a transaction, you know, of a, of a seller selling the business and in the middle of the transaction, the entire account gets suspended just because it changed the brand on some of the listings. So, uh, bottom line before you, you know, when you choose the name, before you manufacture, before you put it on the listing, before you do anything, do two searches, one, uh, on Google and two on the on the you know on the European trademark office you can run a, a basic search yourself or just ask your lawyer to run the search um, it's usually more professional and it usually doesn't cost more than uh, you know than than the registration um, it's usually included in the price so uh, remember to do that to avoid huge problems in the future um, Moving on to uh, to copyrights. Um, so here it's actually the same as the US, just as the US uh, where you have uh, rights in any um, graphic designs or photos or text, uh, the moment you created them, same in Europe. So if I created this, uh, this tiger paper plate, um, I actually own the copyrights without any registration. Okay, so even without a registration, um, I own the copyright. So if somebody comes in and tries to uh, use my design, I can stop that person and I can file a complaint uh, complaint within a second. We'll talk about how to file those complaints on, uh, later. Um, so um, a thing to remember for copyrights, do not copy anybody else's images or text or uh, photos or graphic designs because they're protected. Whoever designed it, it's there. If I design this uh, this dog here, um, I you know you cannot use the same dog. Um, you can use the idea of a dog on a scarf or even husky Siberia on the dog on the scarf, but not not this particular one. So don't copy design and don't copy text. We're seeing, especially in Europe, we're seeing people suspended for just you know, one sentence they used uh, from somebody else's uh, listing and um, and then, you know, and, and they're removed. So, uh, so be careful not to use other people's uh, text or photos or graphic design. Um, so I'll, um, I'll move quickly to filing complaints. Um, as in the US, uh, in the UK and in Europe in generally, you can file complaints using the brand registry. So the, you will have your brand registry for Europe. Uh, you need to choose the, the, the specific ASIN um, and then file the complaint. Make sure here um, if you know if you want to remove hijackers from your listing. You're going to type here your listing, right? I mean, you're, you're going to put your ace in. Um, and then if you do not choose specific sellers and you remove it, you will remove yourself. So be careful. Uh, and that's a very common mistake. Put your ace in number here and then uh, choose here specific sellers. And then you click on the ones you want to remove everybody except yourself. 
and then you file it and Amazon will remove those hijackers um, sitting on your listing. So, uh, so very easy in Europe um, to do that, same as, uh, as the US. Um, I'll finish with patent laws. Um, patents, so what's interesting with, uh, with th there are two types of patents, right? I mean, there's design patents, which covers the shape of a product, like you see here, this bottle, okay, that's a design patent. Um, and there are patents, the, the regular utility patents that you and I know, you know, that kind of protect the, the technology. Uh, what's interesting to know in Europe, and many people don't know, and I don't know if I should tell you, but, uh, but the, the European uh, Patent Office doesn't check if this product already existed. Although they should, they don't do that. And what happens is that a lot of products are just registered and, and their design patent gets registered in Europe while it already existed for years. Um, in the U.S., it would never happen. In, you know, in the U.S., examiners look at the, the, you know, they do a search. They try to see if there's a, what we call a prior art, prior publication, um, and then they'll deny it. Um, in Europe, everything is registered. So we had a case where with a spinner uh, where everybody was already selling the spinner for like a year. Um, and, and unfortunately, it was, uh, you know, the, the, there was one seller who got this registration and removed everybody in the market. Uh, so, be, so, you know, it's a bit ridiculous, but uh, at least you, you as, you know, as a patent owner, if you file it correctly, don't file it after it was published, file it before you publish your, uh, you know, your, uh, your design, um, and you can get the protection within three weeks. If you're using other people's design, make sure you conduct a search to avoid an infringement. Okay, so if you're using uh, this uh, bottle of, uh, of Camelback, for example, um, you know, go on Google Patent and search for the, the patents of Camelback to see what they have so that you can avoid infringement. Um, so that's, that's in a nutshell about uh, the legalities of Europe in, in 10 minutes. Um, I'm happy to, you know, to discuss it with you. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out.